The roads may be dry right now, but we know that that could change in just a matter of hours. I'm Kirsten Holmes. We'll have a live report on what you can expect tonight. I can still hear those last words. I love you, dear. I will be home soon. But he did not go home. The man convicted of killing a San Diego police officer and injuring his partner gets the death penalty. More from inside the courtroom today. A secret recording with new information related to two women lost on a ranch in Idlewild. Plus, how to avoid scammers when donating money to help people in Ukraine. A veteran who overcame discrimination in his service being recognized for his lifetime service to his country and community. Music is for everyone. And so are those who play it. CBS 8 News, Alive at 6, starts now. A winter storm hit San Diego County during the early morning hours, and we're not done yet. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Jesse Pagan, and for Marcella Lee. Officials are also blaming the weather for at least one death on the 15 freeway. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is on that story and the other problems the storm is causing in just a moment. First, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis here early with the first look at the conditions outside right now. Carlene? Right now, it's fairly quiet. We are putting a pause on the wet weather, but we're not done just yet. So looking out west from our Mount Soledad camera. You are seeing those clouds in the distance. We did have the sunshine by the afternoon hours, but we still have to have those umbrellas nice and handy as we go into this weekend. So we are seeing some showers that are really favoring the mountains as well as portions of East County, and that's going to be the case at least for our next couple of hours. It's not until we get into tomorrow night that we start to have more of an influx with that moisture, and that's because the first one did move through. That first low is now impacting across uh, northern portions of Arizona. You're also seeing it move towards the four corners, but it's the one right behind it. That's going to be the next one to move in, and that's going to bring in our rain chances, and then also talking about mountain snow. We've already had snow in our local mountains. An additional two to four inches is expected. Snow levels coming down near 4,500 feet. This is going to start later on tonight and take us all the way into the early morning hours for Sunday. So the most favorable location for wet weather tonight is going to be over the mountains, and then we're talking about an influx of moisture by tomorrow afternoon. The it takes us all the way into the dark and early morning hours for Sunday. So as I said, we're not done just yet. We have more of that moisture on the way. And the rain and snow came in that big wave that we had. That was late uh, Thursday night into early Friday morning. It brought with it heavy traffic, accidents as well, and at least one death on highways in our area. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes, she's been tracking all that weather over the county and joins us live with what's hap what happened overnight into this morning. Kirsten? Yeah, hey there, Carlene. I want you to take a look behind me. I'm here in Kearney Mesa. Let's take a look at the conditions right now. As you said, there's that drying out condition. You can see the clouds are kind of puffy and looking fun, but we know, like you just said, that we are not done yet with the moisture. Now, for some, the weather that we saw today brought, you know, maybe a trip up to the mountains or maybe a slower commute, but for others, it was an absolute nightmare. This deadly crash involved a jackknifed Amazon semi truck and a Honda CRV on northbound I-15 at the I-8 interchange just after two Friday morning. A 76 year old San Diego woman, the driver of the Honda died. The trucker, a 27 year old San Bernardino County man was not hurt. Elsewhere in the county, a rollover accident at I-5 and Mission Bay. Along Quarry Road, road closures as the rain puddled together and caused light flooding. And up in Mount Laguna, a blanket of snow covers the roof at Mount Laguna Lodge. Why White on the trees, white on the ground, you know, people sledding, having a good time. Our internet keeps going in and out and fading because of the snow on the satellite dishes. Tom with Mount Laguna Lodge says this was just another winter storm for them. You know, piles of snow from last week's storm, so this is just cleaning it up, making it look pretty again. Buddy warns if you're planning on heading up to the mountains to enjoy the snow. I drive slow and they need to use their gears and not their brakes. They need to bring uh, snow chains and a shovel, a good attitude and a lot of patience because when there's a lot of people up here, there's it takes a while to get here. There's not any place to dump trash up here, so uh, it's very limited. So and people tend to I'm sure they see pictures of what it's like at the beach after July 4th and it kind of looks like that when the snow melts. Bring your cash and take your trash. And for drivers not in the mountains, dealing with rain made for a wet commute Friday morning, keeping CHP busy. Disabled motorists getting stuck in the mud, um, trying to cross pools of water where their cars become disabled. 
California, we have 300 plus days of sunshine a year. So I, it's a little harder usually for us down here in Southern California to transition to any sort of inclement weather, whether whether it's the uh, rain, snow, uh, fog. So as we get ready for another round of weather to move through the area and anytime we have rain, check your tires, check your windshield wipers, your headlights, because all those uh, portions of your vehicle, especially in the rain, can impact them. Sometimes if it's a minor incident, our call volumes are increased, so it might take just a little bit extra time for us to respond to you. You have an increased stopping distance, you know, those wet roadways. Uh, just remember, slow down. That's really what it comes down to. You're taking a look out at the clouds to the east as like Carlene said, you know, we're going to expect some more of that wet weather to make its way into our area throughout the weekend. And you know, the reminders we give you are always the same when we are expecting snow and rain is to make sure you check your tires, make sure you pack your patients, make sure you do all of the things to make sure that you can get home safely. Reporting live in Kearney Mesa for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Uh, Kirsten, what else did CHP say we can do when we're driving on the road to stay safe out there? You know, one of the biggest things that we can do, CHP says, and that, you know, we do the story all the time, is pack some patience. If you're in a rush, that normally kind of takes your defenses down. Just be a little more patient with yourself and with other drivers and always. Make sure you're not driving distracted. That's a big no-no, especially when there's wet weather outside. Absolutely. Lots to pay attention to. Kirsten Holmes reporting live for us tonight on our top story of the weather here today. Kirsten, thank you. For the latest updates on the current storm, you can text the word STORM to the number on your screen. That's 858-571-8888. We'll send you the latest forecast and radar mops. And remember, we want to see the weather where you live. You can upload your pictures and videos through the CBS 8 app as well. Just click on the Near Me feature on the bottom right of the app to share all of that with us. It was sentencing day for the man who shot and killed a San Diego police officer and wounded another. It is the order of this court that you shall, for this murder conviction, suffer the death penalty. That was a judge sentencing Jesse Gomez to death for the July 2016 murder of Officer J.D. de Guzman during a stop in Southcrest. A jury found Gomez guilty of murder and a special circumstance allegation of killing a police officer. That jury also convicted him of attempted murder for the shooting of de Guzman's partner, Wade Irwin. Right now, there is a moratorium on executions in California. We'll have more on the emotional day in court in our second half hour. A grim milestone if you're feeling, uh, if you filled up your car, or you need to rather, the average price for a gallon of regular gasoline in San Diego County has topped $5. Uh, today marked the largest daily increase since July of 2015, with prices rising more than 12 cents overnight. The county average is $5.10 a gallon. Last year at this time, we were paying $3.75. AAA says the price spike is due to a supply shortage driven by multiple factors, including traders, shippers, insurance companies, and banks avoiding Russian oil transactions. As of today, California has been under a state of emergency for two years. While a lot has changed, like the arrival of vaccines and the lifting of mandates, the emergency order itself has stayed the same. Political reporter Morgan Reiner shows us the ones trying to change that. Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Mark Galley took time today to reflect on just how far we've come in the last two years, saying with the knowledge and tools that we have today, people should no longer be afraid of what's to come. To that, Rescue California said exactly. It's time to get rid of the emergency. March 4th, 2020. This is no longer isolated in just one part of our state. Newsom declares a state of emergency the same day the first Californian, a man aboard the Grand Princess Cruise Line, dies of COVID-19. We direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. These empty streets now bustling with people, arenas filled with fans, mask mandates lifting. Not over, but certainly uh, we have tools and a level of understanding that should no longer cause us to be afraid of what's coming, uh, but really to be prepared for it. Tools, Newsom's office said, are provided and streamlined under the state of emergency order. When the governor announced he was dropping all but 5% of his executive actions last week, he said he's keeping the order in place to help with testing, vaccinations, masks, and staffing shortages if a future surge comes our way. So the governor is being very judicious 
uh, in terms of not um, uh, having orders in place that are no longer needed. But the reality is, even though things are so much better now, we're still in a global pandemic. Democratic Senator Scott Weiner said it's not time to lift the order. Rescue California says, uh-uh, Newsom still has too much power to bypass the legislative process. Today is the anniversary of Gavin Newsom's uh, grab of executive power. He has relinquished some executive powers in the last few weeks, probably due to the fact that this is now a, a building problem for him. Republican Senator Melissa Melendez introduced a bill to officially get rid of the state of emergency. After multiple failed attempts to bring it up for a discussion on the floor, it has its first committee hearing set for March 15th. Thanks, Morgan.